If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. No changes to the ban list or restricted list for any format. Which I think is actually a really good thing, especially when it comes to modern. Actually, pretty much exclusively when it comes to modern. The other formats, I either don't play too much myself, or no longer know enough about the metagame to be able to make a good call on them. Or a well-reasoned call on them. Let's start with modern, though. Right now, according to MTG Top 8, no deck is that prevalent. By that prevalent, I mean in the past, last two weeks, as of when this is up, no deck is more than about 10% of the format. Jund and Affinity have been at about 10% at their peaks uh, during that period. I think Infect, prior to it, was at about 10%. But no deck is too good right now, and nothing seems to me anyway to really need help, with the possible exception of blue control decks. Maybe. I'm not necessarily keen on another unbanning of, say, like, Preordain, or definitely not Jace the Mind Sculptor, to make blue decks better, but one issue with the Rise of Dredge is that blue decks, blue control decks, reactive decks, already tend to have a bit of an issue with having the right answers. So, I think it was Brian Kibler who said, uh, you can have the right, or what was it, there's no such thing as the wrong ans wrong threat, only the wrong answer. That's kind of what blue decks face nowadays. You have, on the one hand, all of these low-to-the-ground aggro decks you need to respond to quickly. Then you have all of these uh, mid-range decks, Jund and Junk, uh, and then you have the way over the top decks, like Tron and other control decks, and then you have Dredge, which fights on a completely different axis, and as a blue player, you're supposed to respond to all of those. Now, if you wonder why blue in modern tends to be used to find combo pieces, that's one reason why. It's because it's so hard to impossible to answer everything just as a control player. It's very difficult to do that. Now, that being the case, if we ever get into a situation in the not-too-distant future, in the future, where mid-range decks, Jund and Junk, or Obzon, uh, specifically, end up being too much of the meta, then I would like to see what it would look like, what the game would look like, if they banned Eldrazi Temple, but unbanned Eye of Ugin. Now, there are two reasons for this. Specifically, when it comes to those mid-range decks, it's that Ayavugan, of course, being banned, hurt Tron, and Tron was a natural predator of mid-range decks. In particular, those that just try to slowly outvalue you, like Jund and Junk. And so, yes, if you gave them back Ayavugan, then you go back to every expedition map, every Sylvan Scrying is a kill spell. You make those decks stronger. Now, there is a little bit of a metagame call even without it. Not having Eye of Ugin means that the Tron decks are not as strong, which leaves more room for Jund and Junk to come in and take over. However, if they become too great, then even though Tron is not as good, it still preys on them, even if to a lesser degree, and can come in and take over that portion of the meta. It's not quite rock, paper, scissors, um, but it's... It's pretty close, there's still a metagame to it. You can play a worse deck if the matchups are in your favor. Now, that being the case, the other reason is, with Eldrazi Temple you've seen a lot of different types of Eldrazi decks, and I actually rather like that. Mostly they hit the mid-range area. If we ban Eldrazi Temple but let Eye of Ugin in, I wasn't the only person to think this, but my suspicion is that you would have the Eldrazi decks consolidate on a few fairly inconsistent, frankly, aggro lists. 
So imagine if you had only four Ivug and not four I and four Eldrazi Temple. And you went into, say, an Eldrazi Mimic. Just, just Eldrazi Mimic. You have, assuming you have four copies of I in your deck, about a 40% chance, just under, to have at least one copy in your opening hand. Of course, the extra copy, notwithstanding having Urborg, doesn't actually do you any good because they're legendary and they don't actually generate mana, they just reduce the cost. But okay, if you have it, your mimics come out for free and you play a little bit like the, uh, the decks in Eldrazi Winter. But 60% of the time you're not going to have one and you end up being a slow aggro deck. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that... I would imagine, anyway, that that then creates a metagame because they consolidate into these low-to-the-ground decks such that maybe not Pyroclasm, maybe that's too low, but, say, Anger of the Gods, Damnation, Languish, Supreme Verdict, uh, cards like those could be used as part of a metagame plan against them. I would like to see if that could be the case. Before Eldrazi Temple was the one that was allowed and I of Ugin banned, I had actually been thinking it would be the other way around, part of my rationale being, they're obviously going to let Tron keep Eye of Ugin, right? Oops. No, I was... I was actually, what, like, 0 for 3 in that season. Like, Eye of Ugin gets banned, Ancestral Vision gets unbanned, Sword of the Meek gets unbanned. I was pitiful that particular season. As for Legacy, I was... I would not have been surprised if something in Legacy Eldrazi had been banned. Some... I don't know that they would have banned a prison piece like Chalice of the Void, because that hurts so many other decks as well. But, say, Eldrazi Temple or Eye of Ugin, that would have made sense. I would not have been surprised if that had been the case. But, at least for the time being, it's not. There is, indeed, a real metagame around Eldrazi in Legacy, and I have to admit, they are the deck that I hate the most in Legacy. I hated Eldrazi in Modern, not necessarily because they were good, I just hated that a 5 mana, excuse me, 5 mana, 5-5 five five with haste and trample was actually a thing, could be a thing in the format, and it's even more infuriating in Legacy. I want to see my low to the ground, my Delvers, my Glistener Elves, my Deathrite Shamans. I want to see my Shardless Agents, my Baleful Strixes. I don't want to see a 5 mana card that doesn't automatically outright win you the game. I am degenerate like that, I suppose. Now as for Vintage, I don't think that anything needed to be banned, or I guess nothing is banned, restricted. Okay, if we're talking about bans, all the conspiracies from Conspiracy 2. We get that. That makes sense. But Workshops has already lost just in the last, what, couple years? Trinisphere, Chalice of the Void, Lodestone Golem. I think you're good. I don't think you need to cut anything more off from them. They're, they have about as few as they can have and still be all that good. Dredge, I mean, Prized Amalgam does not a vintage deck make. I don't think that Dredge got any new tools that have helped it substantially enough that it's, well, it hasn't risen to that prominent uh, a scene in the metagame. And as for blue control decks, admittedly, I don't know if any of them have gotten enough good tools. I'm not aware of anything as such. Now, for Popper, Peregrine Drake is what I have heard a number of people clamoring for, and I've seen that on Reddit as well. For those that don't know, there was the Cloud of Fairies deck, the Familiars deck. Actually, even a little bit more background. So, when Cloud of Fairies was banned, at that time, of the top ten most played cards in Popper, nine of them were blue. The one that wasn't blue was Lightning Bolt. And that tells you a little bit about the format, about where all the power is concentrated. And that makes sense, right? That's your color for Delver, for Spell Stutter Sprite, for Ponder, for Brainstorm, for Preordain. That's your color for Counterspell. There's a lot, Gitaxian Probe, there's a lot that you have going in blue. So, 
yeah, they wanted to try to diversify the format. And one way to go about doing that was banning Cloud of Fairies, which enabled the Familiars deck to go off. Now, Cloud of Fairies wasn't just featured in this one. Delver used it as well to team up with Spell Stutter Sprite. You get a clock out, and you get to hold up Counterspell mana, and you can cycle it. it. It's a good card there, too, but the Familiars deck is where it really could shine. Now, this is a deck that uses the Karoos, the lands that come in tapped, make you bounce a land, but generate two mana, and Cloud of Fairies and Snap, which untap lands. Well, if you're untapping a land that makes more than one mana, you're netting mana, right? Cloud of Fairies costs two and untaps two lands. You can make four mana. Combine this with the Familiars cards, the black and white ones that lowered the cost of blue spells, and before your very eyes, you had, you know, a combo deck. You could make infinite mana, or you could mill your opponent infinitely. There were a number of ways that you could go about doing it. They banned Cloud of Fairies, and then Peregrine Drake comes into play. Now, Peregrine Drake, I play in Animar EDH. It untaps five lands. Well, again, we're using Karoos, so we're getting a lot of mana out of this. Peregrine Drake is sort of filling the same role, but the Delver decks that were not necessarily preying on uh, familiars, but they could use Spell Pierce, Counterspell, Daze, they could fight those decks by just countering their consequential spells. Those decks no longer have Cloud of Fairies to help Spell Stutter Sprite be able to counter their spells. So they're nerfed, while Peregrine Drake enables familiars to do about the same game plan. You see the problem here. So if anything could be banned, Peregrine Drake is what I would imagine uh, going forward. We'll see though, apparently it's not that consequential, or at least WotC doesn't see it that way. I don't know enough about the popper metagame, especially online, to be able to make that judgment call. But that's a little bit of background for you, what the problem is, so that you can understand that perspective, whether or not it rises to that level. And beyond that, I haven't really seen anything from Commander for whether anything's been banned there. It's not my favorite format, and I run a degenerate deck in it anyway. I have a couple decks. I have Animar for when I just like playing Solitaire. It is a really tough deck to play. That's why I like it. It's yeah, it's Solitaire, but it's also on the turn you're comboing off. Pretty tricky to do. Watch a few of my videos when I'm trying to go off, and you'll see what I mean. I, I think I literally spend a 30-minute turn in the Nylia vs. Animar video of mine. Um, and then I also have Damia for when I'm doing multiplayer and trying to be diplomatic and not trying to make it a game of Arch Enemy. Which is what Animar is, basically. Beyond that, there is one other, uh, not even issue, it, it's not an issue, but I just, I found this interesting and I wanted to share it with you. So, Rogue Deck Builder, Kevin from Rogue Deck Builder and I, uh, actually he hasn't been talking to me too much, I've been leaving comments on some of his videos. Uh, he has noted on a number of occasions some cards that he wishes were banned or unbanned. Now, for those that don't know, while Rogue Deck Builder does, well, build Rogue Decks <laughs> an awful lot, uh, and was indeed one of the inspirations for my channel back when I was doing a lot of Rogue Decks, back when I had the means to do so, uh, his main deck, in modern anyway, is Soul Sisters. Long story short, you gain a bunch of life, you outvalue the opponent, and you win with a bunch of little creatures that beat face. I mean, it, it's more than that, obviously, but that's how I like to characterize it. And you can go and watch him play against LSV at least once. I think it may have been more than once on camera. Uh, he's a really good Soul Sisters pilot. And it's taken him, you know, to the professional level playing that deck in Modern. So he's a Soul Sisters main that happens to Johnny into other decks, and I like that. I'm a main as well, and I Johnny into other decks. Uh, of course, I'm an Infect main. If the name didn't give that away. Uh, Rogue Deck Builder has 
on various occasions, and this is all something you can find on YouTube, said that Stoneforge Mystics should be unbanned, that Glycerin Elf or Inkmoth Nexus should be banned, that Become Immense should be banned, Mutagenic Growth, Gitaxian Probe, um, that Splinter Twin should be unbanned, but Deceiver Exarch should have been banned. You catch a bit of a theme here with uh, the cards that he's suggesting. Now, those aren't the only ones. He's also suggested that, say, Simeon Spirit Guide be banned. But with few exceptions, at least of the ones of which I'm aware, the suggestions for bans and unbannings that he makes improve his deck in the metagame. So, obviously, as I play Infect, that tends to be a favored match over Soul Sisters. They gain a ton of life that just makes absolutely no difference against Infect, because we're fighting on a completely different axis. Or, uh, for instance, uh, Splinter Twin. He didn't want Splinter Twin to be banned. Yes, admittedly, the Soul Sisters Splinter Twin match is skill intensive, but also, when you have Souls Warden, Souls Attendant, Oriok Champion out, uh, and a few others, potentially. When the when the Splinter Twin player tries to go off, if it's with Deceiver XR, you gain as much life or more uh, than they are able to dish out. And with Pestermite, as long as you have at least two, you're fine. You're not going to die there. And it gets a little trickier. Restoration Angel, you need to have three out, etc. You get the idea. It gives you a way to not lose to them. Uh, and so, as a result, Soul Sisters was considered, generally speaking, favored over Splinter Twin. Also, you had Path to Exile for if they tried to combo off and, you know, and whatnot. You had some good, good sideboard answers. Bear in mind, when Scissors tells you that Rock is OP, That sounds a little harsh. I don't mean it that way. I really don't. Uh, when you, What's a better way of putting it? If you see a theme, if you catch a pattern in the suggestions that a person is making, just keep in mind who the speaker is, and even if they're not meaning it. I don't even think that Rogue Deck Builder was meaning uh, to sort of like push his deck ahead. It's probably something that just happens subconsciously. You know, you play this deck, you know its ins and outs, and you know what is strong against it and what it's strong against. And so you know what sorts of things to promote. Maybe that's all it is. That's probably all that it is. I don't think it's anything devious. If you hear me come out and say, you know, Lightning Bolt should be banned and Path to Exile while we're at it, well, you know where I'm coming from, and I'm never going to say those things. <laughs> I very much like those cards in Modern, actually, even even as they hurt me. I called in one of my videos for a reprint of Goblin Guide. Burn is one of my harder matchups. I'm not saying that for my own health. <laughs> but you see my point. Bear in mind when a person says that they want something banned or unbanned, or even in the case that they say that they like the format the way it is, that could be because right now they're on top. And I don't think that's the case for me right now, because Jund is so prevalent, and Affinity is about 10% of the meta right now, and it often runs Galvanic Blast, after all. But, you know, take that for whatever it's worth. All of that said... Wow, I got a little bit off track. I apologize for that. L all of that said, generally speaking, I'm happy that there weren't any changes to any of the ban list. And let me know what you think, please. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. In the meantime, take care, Magic Community on YouTube. I will see you later. Bye-bye.